Tavis strikes again. No more heroes. Hey guys, it's Turner4590, and we live in a world where a brand new No More Heroes game was released in the year 2019. <laughs> I've been waiting for this stay for a long time, and where whereas this game might not be the official threequel that a lot of people wanted, um, I can safely say that at its core, it's still very much a Suda game, it's still very much a No More Heroes game, and uh, it on, honestly is more than a Suda game, it's kind of a love letter to Suda games in general. Uh, as you'll see throughout the game, and uh, this is going to be a little interesting to play uh, <laughs> as far as a Let's Play is concerned, because uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll get into some of the uh, different uh, kind of gameplay elements of this game, but some of them are a little unexpected, and it's going to make for an interesting playthrough. Uh, but hey, again, it's No More Heroes. Pretty uh, an obligation on my part that we have to cover it on the channel, so... Uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's strike again, and we'll just go mild difficulty, because, yeah, I, I don't really want to deal with Bitter. Believe it or not, there's an even higher difficulty above Bitter uh, that they've added, but only once you've beaten the game, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, just jump right into it, and we'll get into the Nadeek Gritty uh, as we go. Nice. Get used to seeing that logo, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes! Charlotte, we'll be seeing him soon enough. Be patient. Introducing Badman, the father of Bad Girl from the original game, which, uh, hey, we just did. Alright. Time to play ball. <laughs> Already hammered, I see. <laughs> <laughs> like, like daughter, like father, I suppose. Great tasting games. Take one more step, and you're dead. It's too late. <laughs> really fucked up now, old man. Oh yes. You wanna play? Let's play. Bring it, nerd. Hey, you're dead in blood. Hold up. <laughs> Been away a long time. There's a new generation of gamers out there. <laughs> Let me at least introduce myself. Travis touchdown. You murdered my daughter. Don't pretend you've forgotten. <laughs> now quit making this shit confusing. They need to know about the most <laughs> badass assassin in video games. You bastard! Quit trying to butter up the gamers! Your fight is here in the real world! Son of a bitch! <laughs> nice work, dickhead. God, there's so much style. What the shit? The Death Drive Mark II. The Phantom Game Console. So this is where it's been hiding. God damn, what an intro. <laughs> Fun fact about this screen, by the way, uh, Travis is colored red and Batman is blue. Player one, player two, red and blue Joy-Cons. Just a little cool touch. Scary! And already getting right into it. So yes, the gimmick of this game is that you are actually, uh, you and Batman have been sucked into the Death Drive Mark II console, and you are going to be transported throughout several uh, games, essentially. There's only a handful of games that were ever released for the console. The console itself was never released to begin with, so it's kind of like a black market sort of thing. And our first game up is Electric Thunder Tiger. And uh, there's actually a little intro movie that plays for every single one of these games, and you can actually miss this one. For some reason, it doesn't autoplay for uh, Electric Thunder Tiger, but it does for the other games. But uh, all the intros are sick, uh, as you'll see. Since so uh, let's get started with this one. Electric Speed City has suddenly been covered in darkness. It seems to be the second coming of the blackout three years ago. The city is currently being kept under full quarantine by the military and with absolutely no information released. One man no rises up once again. <laughs> Rex. Power. Colt. 
God, Tra Travis would fit in that universe. <laughs> Very much so. God, this art style is gorgeous. It seems as though the machine you can tell a lot of the budget of this game went into the cutscenes. As few as there are, they're all fantastic. And stylized, as you can see. The animation style here kind of reminds me of uh, the opening of Command Mission in a way. Which is funny because he's suiting up just like in uh, in that game. <laughs> a game even more obscure than No More Heroes. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> what a name. To return light and hope. To the city. And without further ado, let's just jump right into the uh, to the gameplay. That's ridiculous. Suda loves his movies, that's for sure. And we're right into it. So, uh, obviously, uh, you, you're all aware this is a spin off title, and uh, well, it still does have swordplay in a way. It is a uh, much more hack and slash, uh, it's more akin to an arcade -y style hack and slash. As you can see, Travis is an extremely mobile in this game, and I probably shouldn't be running around. Let's just get right into it, because <laughs> this game is actually surprisingly long. It's actually the longest of the No More Heroes games. Yeah, so the same same goes for me. Yeah, really. Don't underestimate video games. Oh man. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay, so also, uh, throughout all the levels, you're going to be finding coins littered all over the place. They kind of guide you where to go, and they're also a currency. Although, currency is really not at all important in this game, but, uh, I don't know, it's something to collect. And here's our first enemy type, Bug Street Boys Red. The names of these guys are really, really bizarre. <laughs> well, hello! Dr. Juvenile. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, while running, uh, your basic attack is the sword swing, and you can actually press the button to do a sword swing, or believe it or not, you can actually just hold the button, and Travis will just swing like an absolute madman. And this is actually, again, this is one of, pretty much the primary attack you're going to be using throughout the entire game, because it's uh, very, very useful. Uh, you can also stand still and use it, and Travis looks really derpy when he's just standing there waving it like a maniac, but... Yeah, again, uh, uh, this game runs at a crisp 60 frames a second, and uh, as far as controls are go, go, it's the smoothest uh, in the series for sure. The controls are butter in this game. It feels really nice. Okay, next up is a heavy attack, and this is where it gets a little bit, a uh, little bit more. Uh, in depth, not not super in depth, but uh, basically the heavy attack. There's uh, two parts to it: the first swing and the second swing. The second swing is significantly more powerful than the first swing, but uh, it's obviously you are left very vulnerable when you do a heavy attack. And just like No More Heroes, uh, just just the series staple, uh, Travis's beam katana runs on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> testosterone or something so whenever it runs out you actually have to uh charge your beam katana air quotes and charging beam katana is something that yeah uh, you didn't have to do too much in the previous games but in this game uh, you are going to need to charge it constantly uh but thankfully it's actually an extremely fast like three shakes will bring your bar from zero to full uh with just three shakes and actually shaking the joy con is like 
pretty pretty uh, uh responsive. It's uh, a lot more responsive than the Wii remote actually. Like it, just three shakes of the controller, and that's uh, pretty much you're good to go. Okay, so we can also jump. Obviously, there's a uh, light platforming elements in this game. Uh, this game is very heavily uh, indie inspired in a lot of regards, and uh, while you actually jump, you can actually do two attacks in midair. You can do a char uh, basic attack, which kind of lunges you towards the enemy. It's actually also good for dodging enemy attacks. And uh, there's a second one as well. Uh, what was that? Oh, okay then. Anyway, so the second attack is a jump and heavy attack, and that kind of creates like a shock wave on the ground that's uh, very good for groups. Although, just like with the other heavy attack, it leads you very, very wide open. Uh, while you're being a left wide open, uh, you can dodge just like in the original, and you'll do a roll. Uh, dodging is actually... Uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of it's kind of iffy in this game. I, I feel like at least in my first playthrough, I have played the whole game. By the way, even though it it did come out two days ago, I've already played the whole thing because I'm a fanatic. But uh, yeah, dodging. Uh, you actually there's quite a lot of invincible uh, frames that you, you uh, have to attack before you can actually dodge. Uh, so one of the primary ways to get out of enemy fire is to actually jump. Because when you're in mid air, you actually have like combat options Sp speaking of options out of dodge though you actually do have two specific dodge animations where if you do a basic attack after dodge you'll do this and a heavy attack is a little bit slower so that's actually cool that there's a uh, like uh, the dodging has a specific move and here's probably the coolest move in the whole game you're going to be seeing choco banana crepe with caramel ice cream Jeez. <laughs> okay, so charge attack. Uh, whenever Travis is holding up the R symbol, you can press the R button to do this. <laughs> so yeah, that's a you can uh, press the R button three times, and you'll do a, a triple attack that is absolutely huge. It's almost like a screen clearer attack. You can aim it, and it's extremely powerful. And it actually does have a mechanic where the charge attack can get actually stronger. Right uh, above our battery, or below our battery gauge at the top left of the screen is a number with a meter. That meter is our charge attack. So when we slash en at enemies, that charge will go up. Uh, and as soon as it's full, we can unleash a charge attack. Uh, if it's full and the number is one or two, uh, the charge attack will actually level up, essentially. So the next time you use the charge attack and every subsequent use of the charge attack, it will be stronger. So right now we're at level 2, which is uh, very, very, very strong. Uh, and then level 3 is ludicrous. Um, pretty pretty much the same basic attack. It's just the animation is a little bit different. And the uh, attack is obviously way more devastating. Uh, the uh, downside to this, unfortunately, is that if you get hit your meter will go down, uh, and it goes down fast. Like, pretty much if you get hit, you are going down one level, essentially, and it goes up to three. So, uh, yeah, trying to not get hit by enemies is a pretty big priority, and some of the enemies in this game can be real dicks about it, so uh, we'll try our best to maintain a, at least a two or three throw of the game, but uh, no promises. Again, serious staple, saving on the toilet. Uh, no save slots in this game, unfortunately. You only get one save file per user account. Thankfully, on the Nintendo Switch, you can just create a new user account, and that user will have a new save. And then you can just delete the user afterward. So that's what I did with uh, this game. So I don't, don't lose my 100% file that I worked so hard to get. White Sheet Man. Okay, so throughout the level, you're going to be finding these NPCs. Uh, usually, they're uh, sheep guys, and uh, yeah, there's uh, there's some that actually have uh, like a lot of words of wisdom. There, this game is definitely you can tell it's written by Suda. This is actually the first game Suda's directed since No More Heroes One. Uh, believe it or not, Suda actually hasn't directed a game since. He was just a writer and producer on No More Heroes Two, Lollipop Chainsaw, Shadows of the Damned, etc. Um, and obviously, the, the main writer. So, uh, like I said, uh, now that we have a charge 3, uh, to level up, you need to use the charge attack. You will remain at your charge level until you use the next attack. 
So uh, now that we're actually at level three, uh, if we get uh, this, I'm just trying to dodge these enemies here. Again, Travis is ridiculously mobile in this game. You're going to want to dodge out of enemies a lot. You can just use the basic attack and like kind of like swing by them. And then when there's an opening, that's when you go for the heavy. Because obviously the heavy attack, if you land both hits, probably does like... Uh, probably like 10 times the damage that the uh, the basic attack does, but the basic attack uh, hits a lot. Soderbug. Okay, so this is where the combat actually gets a surprising amount of depth. Uh, some would even argue that <laughs> this system actually has more depth than... Uh, than the previous games, uh, anything from the previous games, but essentially uh, these are skill chips. And what skill chips do is they're basically special abilities and there's like two dozen of them in the game. And a lot of them are actually really cool and they all operate on separate cooldowns. And uh, gonna be honest, uh, this this one right here, Shining Chip, is actually one of the best ones in the whole game, honestly. A lot of the first couple of chips you get are really, really good. And there's almost no reason to ever swap out of using those four, except for, except for a couple of, uh, couple of exceptions. Anyway, so the Shining Chip, as you can see, you can actually uh, pick up uh, enemies, and this works on any enemy. It doesn't matter if it's a boss, a mini boss, uh, etc. The Shining Chip, uh, pretty much every skill works on every enemy. And uh, yeah, you can just uh, pick them up and then toss them in a desired direction. And you can toss them into other enemies too, and it does a shitload of damage. Okay, but moving on. Um... Yeah, the, the real... It's interesting that they started out with Electro Triple Star. I guess it's just to familiarize yourself with the gameplay because these different games that Travis is going to be jumping into all have this hack and slash gameplay, but they usually have a... Oh, shit, I just got hit. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, as you can see, our level went from three all the way down to two just from that one hit. Uh, thankfully, we got it back up to uh, three. Hopefully, I can show, show off the uh, third charge attack... Uh, before losing it, because it's actually really, really satisfying. But yeah, each of the games that Travis jumps into is going to have the same gameplay style, but they'll usually have a specific gimmick to it. And uh, interestingly enough, Electro Triple or uh, Electro Thunder Tiger, uh, Electro Triple Star is the boss of this area, um, doesn't have a gimmick pretty much. It's just you're going through the levels and you kill the enemies. There's no actual gameplay gimmick to it. Uh, as opposed to the other levels, which there are gameplay gimmicks. So I, I just find that a little interesting. I guess it's so you can familiar, familiarize yourself with the actual combat. Uh, okay, we're actually really close. There we go. So, level three, giant, <laughs> giant digitized tiger, and it's insane. Let's use a shining chip right there. And heavy attacks should kill these guys, no problem. No! So as you can see, uh, these enemies actually have quite a bit of health. Some of them can be very annoying, and you really want to be careful of your attacks. One thing this game does a really good job of is that in, in the previous games, you kind of just block every enemy, and you don't really have to care about enemy attacks in the slightest except for the bosses. But uh, in this game, it actually makes it feel like all of the enemies are like a threat in their own, in their own way, except for maybe the one-hit kill enemies. Those are just <laughs> fodder for uh, to bring your charge level back up. Speaking of, we're actually uh, pretty close. So yeah, so that level you're going to be finding various cash boxes like that, and they just have actual cash. Sometimes they have collectibles. There's a variety of different collectibles that you can find in this game. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something to do. <laughs> As you can see, these levels aren't uh, aren't the most most populated. Oh no, and the system's glitching out. Apparently, that's not good. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, maybe a little bit. Oh, another cool thing they brought back, just like in No More Heroes 1, when you uh, press A on the title screen, you can make the star float up, and if you press A, you can actually cause the screen to distort like that. It's just a little cool touch. Okay, moving on to the second part of uh, Electro Thunder Tiger. Bug Street Boys Blue. Look at the little jig that guy's doing. Okay, let's go. Yeah. 
Nice. There we go. Probably could have saved that. Th uh, these Bug Street Boys are really n nothing to fear except for... Oh, actually, I don't think that projectile actually hit us. One nice thing is that your basic attack will actually destroy enemy projectiles, so uh, you don't have to worry too much about projectiles hitting you, except for maybe some of the bigger ones. Um, yeah, these enemies go down in one hit, so they're really not, not that big of a deal to get rid of. Again, these uh, cash boxes will contain LBs for you to use, but LBs are <laughs> not particularly useful in this game. You, you'll see when we get back to our hub world, which this game does have, so that's kind of cool. I meant to grab the other guy, unfortunately. It just kind of targets whatever the closest person to you is. One really cool thing, uh, these enemies, by the way, are called bugs. Uh, like, essentially, Travis is killing glitches in the system uh, throughout the game, so unfortunately, no blood, but uh, one, one thing that's really actually cool is that whenever you do kill enemies, you've probably been noticing it, but uh, whenever you do kill enemies, let's kill this one right here, as you can see, they actually kind of, like, digitize and, and, like, glitch out and explode in, like, this colorful confetti. So it's ki it's pretty similar to the other games. It's just obviously sands the blood. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, the it's actually a really satisfying effect. And it, it's, it always looks cool no matter what in the game. So I don't know. It's really cool. You also get that really satisfying schwing sound effect uh, that you get whenever you landed a killing blow in the original as well. So that's fun. So as you can see, that... Uh, uh, hand uh, at the top of the corner it charges up surprisingly quickly and yeah you're gonna uh, at, at first I kind of found it like tricky to like balance like using the specials and stuff but you really want to use them constantly because again like all enemies are weak to them like you can absolutely wreck some rooms if you have the right combination of uh, skills equipped and as you can see you can equip up to four so that's really cool one thing you probably noticed already on the uh, other side of the screen is that, yeah, there's a bad man on the right side, and that's because this entire game can be played in co-op. Unfortunately, uh, I have not experienced the co-op yet. I've heard that, uh, I've heard it's fine. Uh, one annoying thing is that uh, friendly fire isn't on, per se, but attacks will connect with the other character. So if bad man's trying to do a special, if Travis hits him, then it will actually stagger him and cancel the attack, but you can't damage each other. But still, that does sound like it might be a little frustrating, but regardless. I, I would like to check out co-op eventually, though. <laughs> Broke-ass head of yours. Okay, so we've actually uh, still don't have enough to level up. There, We are gaining experience as we kill these enemies, but um, unfortunately we can't actually... Uh, use it to level up until we have 500 XP. Uh, as far as skills go, we actually just grabbed another one, which is the Psycho Chip. Nice. So the Psycho Chip um, fires shots from the Death Glove. Uh, and this is, again, this is surprisingly one of the best skills in the whole game, I find. Uh, just really, really useful, uh, as you'll see. Um, let's, uh, oh, unfortunately, if you switch, one nice thing is you can switch out skills at any time. You don't need to be next to a toilet or anything. You can do it at any time. The downside to this is that whenever you do this, your cooldown on whatever you just equipped is going to be at zero, obviously, so you can't just pause, use ability, pause, the cooldown resets, and then you just go, go to town. So you do have to wait, unfortunately. There we go. The tiger is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so using the Psycho Chips, as you can see, uh, yeah, the Psycho Skill Chip, um, basically shoots, like, a wide range of projectiles, and the, it's not the fact that, like, it's shoot, well, first, it's a ranged attack, which is insanely good, but, um, the main thing about it that makes it so good is that it stuns enemies completely, like, they'll have, like, floating chickens above their head, and this, again, works on literally every enemy in the game including bosses like the, the skills are nuts in this game they're very very fun to use so uh using this uh psycho chip uh <laughs> assuming the psycho chip doesn't outright kill these enemies in one hit like they did just there um it will stun them and then you can lay you, uh, you can land a handful of uh heavy attacks on the enemies while they're stunned it's very very good Nice. Sweet. We're doing a lot better than I was doing at the uh, when I first played this game. Uh, 
again, I'm saying that like it was a long time ago, but uh, <laughs> it was two days ago. So throughout the level, uh, one of these, this is actually, believe it or not, kind of a collectible that you can find, but this is a ramen stand. And uh, ramen stands are great because uh, there's usually two per level. And uh, as soon as you find a ramen stand, you actually get a power, uh, not power boost, but uh, your power level for whatever your charge attack is will increase. Um, and uh, you'll gain full health and uh, you also get to eat ramen. <laughs> And you'll also get a charge move immediately, obviously. So, very, very good. Grandpa's words of wisdom. Hmm. So, uh, Bugstra, uh, I think that's how you, how you say this. Uh, yeah, he has uh, Grandpa's words of wisdom all throughout the entire game. And, uh, I don't know, some of it's actually surprisingly interesting. So, that's uh, something cool to look forward to. Okay, I believe we're almost at the end of this area. Oh, so that's a life, actually. Lives are actually important in this game, uh, at least in the beginning when you're not, you're kind of getting used to the game's mechanics. Uh, you can uh, die uh, pretty pretty easily if you're not careful. Uh, there is really no way to heal right now aside from ramen stands and toilets, uh, and... At least in this first level, I found they were a little far apart, so you do actually have to be pretty careful. Um, because uh, lives are actually shared. You'd think that lives would be, uh, you know, like you get a handful of lives every time you enter one of these games, but it's actually your life, period. So if you, say, if you get knocked down to two lives, when you enter the next game, you will still have two lives, so you need to be extremely careful. Uh, again, as you go on, you're going to be getting a lot of extra lives and... To be honest, I, ne I never actually died uh, after the uh, after the second game, I don't think. Because uh, by that point, you pretty much... I don't want to say mastered the game's mechanics, but uh, you, you're obviously doing a lot better than you would have uh, near the beginning. Okay, let's uh, stun this guy. Oh, God. Shit. See, as you can see, like I was stuck in the heavy attack animation, so I couldn't actually uh, hit the guy. Um, so I got hit in, in return, and there goes down... Uh, one of my charge levels. Again, the, the nice thing is the charge attack is still insanely good, even if it's at level one, but it, it is undeniably better uh, at level three. <laughs> is that a challenge? No, you don't actually get anything for not leveling up. It's just, just kind of a... a, a a taunt from uh, Dr. Juvenile. Anyway, so yes, leveling up you can do uh, at your own will in the map, or in the uh, stat screen. And yeah, let's just level up right now. Leveling up is a, a little a little half-baked. All, all it just does is increase your HP and increases your attack power you get. Unfortunately, as far as combos go, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble, but this and this is all you're going to get uh all of the combat variety comes from the uh, enemy types and the uh the skills which there are again there's like two dozen skills in this game and they're all different so uh, that is cool there's even some skills that only Batman can use Batman, by the way is uh, obviously your co-op character and uh he is pretty much identical to Travis as far as his like he has different animations but Either he's pretty much the same character, but he does have specific skills that you can use. Anyway, let's stop beating around the bush, and let's move on to the next part of Electro Thunder Tiger. <laughs> so try saying that five times fast. Electro Thunder Tiger. Electro Thunder Tiger. Electro Thunder Tiger. Ugh. <laughs> 